it's Linda Carroll here from my studio, Gather of Great Things, and it's Magical Friday. <laughs> Sorry that I had to postpone our Monday get-together, but the roofers were here, and they were hammering and banging, and they did not leave until this morning. So I finally have some quiet so that I can uh, make this make this new video and I wanted to show you the collage um, that I did and I will be doing during this particular get together um, I was just thrilled with it I had so much fun looking for the images and um, making sure that they were clear or there are a lot of vintage images in here and and crisp and uh, finding the right background and so on and so forth so I just fell in love with this I love working on our series where we're starting on a background and then building on top of this background this background is available on the Linda Carroll Art Creative Community site. It's a free download. And also, um, I posted on the site this flamingo, which you'll see is right here in my collage. Now, I also have this page on my Etsy shop, and I'll put a link down below. I have both this page and this page on my Etsy shop. If you want to do a collage similar to mine, um, absolutely you can go. I've tried to keep the price low uh, in case you want to add to your stash of goodies to work with in collage. If not, and you're a member of the community, you can download this background, use it by itself, or if you want to download this flamingo she is there for you to download as well so anyway I this one this one I printed out on photo paper as well as this one this one I just printed out on regular copy paper and it really made a, a nice nice print so anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the camera and I am going to fussy cut these images so that I can build the collage with you today and um, and we'll just have some cutting and pasting fun okay so I'll be back in just a few minutes in probably five seconds for you but I'll see you again soon Okay, I'm back and I have all my pieces um, fussy cut out and I have my extra pieces from the kit. There were a few extra pieces in there. Um, and it took a little while because they're a little, they're very fussy. Let's put it that way. But um, I know it's gonna be a lot of fun putting this one together too. Number one, you know how I love totems and building totems, and most of the time I use kind of abstract things, but I remember back when I did my um, steampunk kit, and I did a lot of totems with uh, people and um, top hats and that kind of thing. So I decided I wanted to do a totem in this landscape, and which makes it pretty surreal and pretty magical, I think. So, the first thing I did was um, I needed to find something to put the totem on. And at first I thought, well, I'll find a column or something like that. But then I ran across this stack of books, and I love what it says on the bottom, in tune with the infinite. And I went, that's it, and I love the texture and everything in here. Uh, and I had already found this um, this background, and I knew I wanted something that was kind of divided into threes. And remember, our, 
are good design and so this was pretty much divided into three sections and so I decided I was going to put the totem in the center of this uh, landscape and I knew I needed something dark so that the books would pop out and this one was perfect I love the blues and I love the clouds the definition in the clouds and then I thought okay what next I have to start finding my pieces that I want um, to include in this and I thought about our our flamingo collage that we did a couple weeks ago and I just the vibrant pink works so well against this blue it's almost electric right here so I found a couple different mingos but to fit this particular collage I, I needed one with the neck bent and I found this fellow he was actually facing the other way and I flipped him in Photoshop and so he was going to be headed the right direction and then I thought well what is he gonna stand on um I need something that will kind of form to his feet and everything and probably wanted another animal to be holding him up so I looked through and I found the perfect turtle and this turtle just kind of fits right here on the top of this book and it looks like he's kind of he's kind of crawled up the side of the books and is kind of resting here on the top and so I tried my flamingo on him and he will fit you know he fit he actually fit really well and uh, so here he is his back feet back foot is resting on his head and his front feet are resting on his back and I thought that's perfect perfect and then what so I saw I was I was already going off the top of the paper <clears throat> with the size of the mingo and the turtle standing on the top of these books and I thought well I could cut the stack of books down but I really love the texture in this so I thought well what if I make it more of a of a 3d kind of graduated um, little a collage not really little this is eight and a half by eleven and uh, so it's not super little so I thought well okay um, what if I balance something else here because I've got a, a space that I needed to take care of you know there's a lot of open space and I thought I'd ha I want to see through it because I want to see the legs of the flamingo on the back of this turtle so I found this um, this light bulb and he's just you know it's just like the perfect light bulb because of the sky that is inside this light bulb and it appears very much like this guy kind of reflected upside down with the landscape reflected in the top and I thought that is absolutely perfect so what I did and this this light bulb is available in the kit I took the leg of the um, of the uh, here we go of the flamingo and I put it behind this light bulb in Photoshop and I cut this section out and then I took the leg of the flamingo right here and I decreased the um, is it the density in it or the fill oh no opac opac the opaqueness of this leg and I kind of put it off off center you know how when you look through a glass of water and things look like they break 
well the leg kind of looks like it it kind of breaks a little bit and goes up so I thought that's perfect if you don't get the kit you could probably uh, fake it with some uh, color pencil I would imagine but I love that I thought that is absolutely perfect okay so then what I still need to finish my totem and I thought okay what would be sitting on top of this light bulb well I love my birds I just finished my bird and bee and blooms journal so I found this blue bird and I'm not sure what kind it is it could be kin of the uh, kingfisher because of its beak but I put him up here on top of the light bulb and that was pretty pretty perfect and then I just started looking for things that were absurd absolutely absurd to put into this collage and magical at the same time and what's more magical than an hourglass and I found this hourglass and I thought okay this can go on the top of my bird head and it fit perfectly so here's my collage continuing to build okay and then I remembered in my steampunk uh, journal I mean steampunk junk journal that I had this little mouse and he looked so cute that kind of scooted around um, a lot of the um, let's see what it was he sitting on top of the clocks I think and so on and so forth so I thought okay I'm gonna put this little mouse right here on top of the hourglass but he still needed something else and so I found these cherries and I thought that would be perfect right here right 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 well let's see here now I wanted to tuck it in behind his ear so I actually cut around this ear let me cut around this other ear so I can I can tuck the cherry down here behind his ear okay so I was gonna tuck him right back here And there's my little mouse here. And he's so cute. Sitting up there on top of the hourglass. But I still had this space here that was just a little bit too much, I thought. So what was I gonna fill up that space with? Well, something could hang from this bird's beak and come right down here. And again, it would give more depth to this collage and make it look a little bit more like three-dimensional. So I found this pocket watch. And I thought, okay, I'm going to take him up here. And if I could cut out one of these links in the chain and have it look like he was putting his beak through this chain, that would be really cool. So I just cut here and let's see what will happen. Here 
there we go. And so it looks like he has his beak through the chain and holding on to that pocket watch, which I loved. All right, then I decided I needed a crown on the head of the of the flamingo, but I didn't want just a regular crown. I'm going for magical, kind of um, odd, and I was looking for crowns, and up came this top of a pineapple. And I thought, well, that's cool. That's perfect. So I found that, cut that out, and put it on my flamingo. And I loved that. I thought that was great. Well, all my colors up here, down here is pretty neutral. So I wanted to bring some color, and I had I had cut out a strawberry earlier, and I tried um, the strawberry on the flamingo's head, and that didn't work, and I tried it, you know, a lot of different places. So I thought, well, like, I have the strawberry, and let me just balance it on this book right here. And I like that. I like the contrast between the book and the berry. And I had, with that this little tiny cherry up here, I had found some larger cherries. And I thought, well, what if we, what if we put this cherry right here on top of this strawberry and balance those right there? And I really like that. So. So, I balanced this cherry right here on top of the strawberry. And I was looking at it and I went, I love this. I absolutely love it. And, um, and so, that's how I made this magical collage. Now, one thing I want to do before we start gluing this down. I told you before that, and I do this a lot in my junk journals, and it's from my old uh, graphic design newspaper magazine paste up days that you know this white around these images will reflect light and I really want to um, take care of that before I start gluing them down and I use these distress inks I sometimes I also use pan pastels but I use these distress inks and I'm gonna try I'm gonna try putting it on with a brush today and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna go around my pineapple here with this distress ink. everybody's doing well it is hotter than blazes here at the beach I'm glad the guys were able to get our roof done before it got as hot as it is today they did a great job really pleased okay All right, and I want to do the same thing to all of my pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and then I'll get right back to you. I'm going to change colors, too, um, on the pieces that I'm uh, using this to get the edges colored like here I'm, I'm still using the green this is peeled paint I'm 
but when I change and do my mouse, I'm going to switch to a brown color. You can see the difference there on the edges. And it really helps on these thin little pieces here to, to do that. And then I've got the top of my strawberry. So I'm going to go ahead and do all my edges and then I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and inked all my edges and I did use five different colors of the Distress Inks to ink. Um, uh, actually, I'm re-recording this because when I turned the camera back on, I only had about uh, two minutes of filmed video, and then the camera stopped. So I'm sorry, but let me go back through this. Um, I used five different colors of Distress Ink. I used the frayed burlap around my turtle uh, books, the watch, and the front of the little bird, the hourglass, and the mouse. I used broken china on the back of the bird, the bottom of the light bulb, and I used peeled paint uh, around the pineapple crown. I used tattered rose around the flamingo, and I used fired brick around the strawberry, the cherry, and the cherry on the top of the little mousie's head. So I went ahead and glued everything down and really the only thing that you need to be really careful of is when you are, if you buy the kit and you want to read, you know, do this, make this collage, um, you need to make sure that when you glue the light bulb down, you kind of offset the leg a little bit so it looks like it's refracted through this light bulb. Uh, but I just, you know, sat down and started at the bottom. I put the glue the turtle on, then I did the light bulb, then I did the bird, uh, then I did the uh, the um, clock the watch on the chain and put the link of the chain that I cut over the bird's beak. Uh, then I did the crown, the pineapple crown, then the hourglass, the little mousy, and I cut around the mouse's ears and tucked the cherry down inside there. And then I put the strawberry and cherry on down here at the bottom. And there it is. It's good. The only other thing I might do is go in and do a little bit of um, touch up. And here, um, I did not cut out each little link of the, um, of the chain. I actually went in with a color pencil and just colored in these links. Now, here, I think I... I'll cheat just a little bit. I didn't cut it out around the um, this light bulb, but that's okay. I think I can give a little bit of a hint. But I just went in with the blue and did inside the links where the blue is overlapped. And then the white, I just left white. And then up here at the top, I just used a, a dark pink. And I think that looks great. I think it looks fine. So, I hope you'll play with this and, and have fun with it. Um, 
if you decide to purchase the um, collage kit it's only two pages in my Etsy shop and there's a link down below and um, enjoy it have fun make the collage I, the only thing I ask is that you not resell it now if you change it up obviously you can do whatever you want with it and, and do a resell then but um, I think I'm going to start making prints of my collages and cards and and I will have those up on my Etsy shop at some point so I hope you had fun I did and I will see you again really soon many blessings to you bye for now